These are good times in the embattled capital of Haiti. Murders and kidnappings are down, and trash is picked up. One of the poorest countries in the world, this tiny island nation of eight million people is plagued by severe political instability, grinding poverty, and endemic diseases including malaria and tuberculosis. For over two decades, the AIDS epidemic has taken a terrible toll on Haiti. It has the largest number of people living with HIV in the Caribbean, a pandemic that claimed 16,000 lives last year alone. Ten times that number here are HIV positive. Despite its ongoing problems, the country may be turning a corner on this deadly disease. Haiti has seen infection rates drop and treatment coverage rates rise faster than those of wealthier nations, including the Dominican Republic next door. Two public health facilities lead the effort, one urban and one rural. Both have developed low-cost approaches to prevention and care. Just a few miles from Haiti's National Palace is the area known by locals as Kosovo. Desperate and dangerous, these slums are also home to the Jeskio Clinic, where Dr. Jean Pop and his staff have battled the AIDS epidemic for more than 25 years. The reality is that we are controlling HIV, and I am certain that we will win this battle. Dr. Pop credits several factors for the recent drop in HIV infection rates from 8% to 2%. He points to a massive condom promotion campaign, screening for other sexually transmitted diseases, and the Haitian Red Cross takeover of previously commercial blood banks. In contrast to many places uh, in the developing world where you have many more people being infected than people being treated, if you're looking at our data, we have less people being infected every year and we have more people being placed on antiretroviral therapy. So I think that it's the reverse and it's the right way to do it, uh, to act both on prevention and treatment. In the U.S., antiretroviral drugs introduced in the mid-1990s turned HIV from a near-certain death sentence to a chronic but manageable disease. The so-called cocktail drugs have long been considered too expensive and not feasible in poor countries. They remained out of reach to most patients here until 2003, when money began to arrive from outside sources like the Global Fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. Money from the U.S. AIDS relief program known as PEPFAR followed in 2004. I, I think that we need to tackle the disease from both ends. We need to make sure that uh, prevention uh, measures are offered and at the same time I think that we need to offer care. I think Haiti in general has turned the AIDS epidemic around. I don't know how many countries can say that but Haiti can be proud to say they're the first country that has integrated prevention and care in a reasonable manner. Dr. Paul Farmer is an American physician whose organization Partners in Health pioneered community-based antiretroviral therapy. This has been, for many of us, Dr. Pop, um, 20, for myself too, 25 years of fighting. And the first 15 of those years were really difficult. The last 10 have gotten better and better. And the last five, where we finally don't have to argue about whether or not it's a good idea to treat HIV in Africa has been great. I mean, because who wants to spend time arguing about that? we got better things to argue about, like how to do the, a better job, how to make sure we find hard to reach patients, how do we take care of people on borders, in refugee camps, the list goes on. Those are the kind of arguments we want to have. We don't want to talk about is it worth saving this person because she's a poor African. You know, that, that, that disgusting argument went on way too long. The Zanmi Lasante Health Center in Kanj enlists local residents to administer free antiretroviral drugs to AIDS and tuberculosis patients all across the remote central plateau of Haiti. Tout accompagnateur by médicament façon balia. C'est aller la caille malade là chaque matin pour des médicaments bali et puis il prend de l'eau libre devant et puis après ça ou ca the 
The Zanmi Lasante Health Center has trained more than 400 outreach workers to dispense this doorstep care, a model that Dr. Farmer is now exporting to other communities in need. We gotta do a better job taking care of HIV. And the way to do that in the United States is the same way as it's done here, community health workers. In an American city where you have people who are addicted to alcohol or drugs or have unstable housing or are the victims of domestic violence, I mean, this des describes an American city population at risk for HIV, that still we can reach them with community outreach workers. You know, you, you may know we call them accompaniateros, those mm -hmm. who accompany, and we took the very same model from here and did it in Boston. Actually, New York and Miami are two places that have said they will do this. AIDS in Haiti has a special history. In the early 1980s, Haitians were included on the now infamous list of four H's, along with homosexuals, hemophiliacs, and heroin users as carriers of the disease. We were labeled as the bad people. So that created so many problems for Haitians all over the world. We were in textbooks. We were all over as the bad people. And this is probably why we stick together. And whether the government was from the right, from the left, from the middle, the AIDS campaign has continued with the same intensity. Haiti did not deny its AIDS epidemic. It became the first country, people like Dr. Pop, who are in my book heroes in this regard, started study groups back in the 1982, 83. Um, instead of saying, no, this isn't true, there isn't a problem like that, they actually started working and taking care of people. So Haiti kind of got branded as the source of the AIDS epidemic globally. And it, obviously that had a terrible impact on tourism. But it also led a lot of public health leaders and people like Dr. Pap and many others to act you know, quickly and decisively. And here, 25 years later, they're still doing this work.